Okay, so what we're going to do today is start a new chapter. So this is chapter three uh, for your from your textbook, and this chapter has to do with Fourier series uh, analysis, uh, Fourier series representation for periodic signals, and 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 so we're, right now we're going to be dealing with uh, periodic signals at the moment, right? Um, so Fourier, I mean, there's a historical note in your textbook early in the in the textbook, I think section three point one, and did that that. that provides you with a historical note who who Fourier was. So Fourier was a French uh, mathematician um, and back in the 1800s. And that's when he developed all of this theory, which is now called Fourier theory or Fourier, uh, Fourier analysis. Um, and, and we're going to start talking about what, what it actually corresponds to, right? So, uh, I mean, you're familiar with Taylor's, Taylor series, right? Uh, and McLaren series, right? So, so who's familiar with Taylor series? Right, good, right? So you say, uh, for example, e raised to power t or e raised to power x can be represented as a Taylor series as a, as a sum of polynomials, right? So x and x squared and x cubed and, and so on and so forth, right? Just like that, uh, a, a Fourier series is also a representation which applies to periodic signals, right? So, um, I mean, Fourier claimed back in the 80, early 1800s that any periodic signal can actually be represented as a sum of periodic complex exponentials. So that's what he claimed. And we now know that that claim while was not 100% accurate, uh, it is accurate for all of the practical signals that we come across. So indeed, all of the practical periodic signals that we come across can actually be broken down into more fundamental blocks, fundamental signals, which are complex exponentials, okay? So how many of you have heard of bases? So linear algebra may kafi small hoti hain, right? So who's, who's heard of bases? Like basis signals, basis functions. Let me, okay, who else? So Hassan, Hassan Shabir, uh, have you heard of bases? Right, so basis signals or, or basis vectors for, for that matter. I mean, you, you agar aap ek vector could represent kare in a two-dimensional plane, right? You'd say that the, the fundamental blocks are the i and j, perhaps that's the notation that you would have used, the x unit coordinate uh, vector and the y unit coordinate and any vector in the, uh, the two-dimensional uh, two dimensional plane can be represented as a linear combination of the, of, of a vector lying, a unit vector lying in the x direction and a unit vector lying in the uh, y direction. And those unit vectors are said to be the basis, right? Because from this, every vector can be represented, right? And just like that, we say KR periodic signals can also be broken down into their fundamental building blocks. And those fundamental building blocks are called the basis. Just like any color can be broken down into its primary representation, right? R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, right? So every color can be thought of as a combination of some elements of red, some elements of green, and some elements of blue. Just like that, Fourier claimed that any periodic signal can be represented as a sum or a superposition or a combination of complex exponentials. So that's why complex exponentials are so important, okay? Now, now, um, I mean, to start off, let me just start out with the complex exponential, right? So remember, complex exponential, periodic complex exponential, x of t equals e raised to power j omega naught t. So we know this is a sum of a cosine and a sum of sinusoid, right? Sum, sum of cosine and sum of sine, right? Um, and it is periodic. What is the period for this? So what is the fundamental period for e raised to power j omega naught t? 2 pi over omega naught. 2 pi by omega naught, right? So 2 pi by omega naught. So who who is this? Kaun bola tha ji? Main musta. Main. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's a good thing you added musta at the end, right? So t equals 2 pi by omega naught, right? Um, what if I I gave you another signal, which is x of t is equal to e raised to part j omega naught t plus e raised to part j to omega naught t. Is this a periodic signal? 
Hamza, Hamza Rafi. So if I can ask the other king, right? So is this a periodic signal, Hamza? Sir, I think it is a periodic signal as it's based. Am I audible? Yes, as yes, yes, you are. As it's based on two different, some of two periodic signals. Yeah, some of two so, periodic signals. Okay, and what is the period here? Fundamental period. Sir, there's a fundamental period would be two here. As it is the LC, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm mixing it up. It's it's the LC. It will be the LCM, the least common multiple of these individual two signals. Yeah, like in okay, so that's what I'm asking, right? So, so the the fundamental period here is T1 is two pi by omega naught, right? Yes. And the fundamental period here T2 is two pi divided by two omega naught, which is actually pi by omega pi naught, by right? Naught. Which is just half of T1. Right? So fundamental period T1 nahi hoga. Huh? So fundamental period to T1 hoga, na, sir, because like T2 yeah, fundamental hoga. period. Fundamental period is smaller because the frequency is twice. Yes. So that means the freq the fundamental period is going to be two times smaller. Yes, yes. Right? So the fundamental period here is uh, for the T2. second exponential is T1 by two, right? So what is the fundamental period of the overall signal? So it would be equal to T2? No. T1. T1. It would be T1. T1. Right? So because... Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Right? So this would be T1. Okay. Now, uh, excellent. Now, X of T, let me just up the game a little bit. Right? And I say, okay... Uh, what if, Chale, uh, for the for the for this equation here, for the second equation, what if this is two and what is this is three? Does the fundamental period change? No, no, sir. No, it does not. Right. So now, what if this is um, e raised to power minus j omega naught t plus some constant? plus e raised to power plus j omega naught t plus e raised to power plus j two omega naught t and let's say this is some constant plus three times e raised to power plus j three omega naught t. What is the fundamental period for this? Two pi over three omega naught. No, that's not the fundamental period. Right, is fundamental period kya? Is fundamental period is two pi by omega naught. Is fundamental period kya? That's also two pi by omega naught. Is fundamental period kya? That's two. That's actually pi by omega naught. And mm -hmm. the fundamental period for this is two pi by three omega naught. So right? this would be two pi by omega naught. So therefore. Therefore, I mean, so the, if this is T1, right? So this is T1 as well. And this is T2 is actually T1 divided by two. And this is T3, which is actually T1 divided by three. And this makes, this, this makes sense. This makes intuitive sense because if you're tripling the frequency, that means the time period is gonna reduce by a factor of three, right? So each one of the terms that I keep on adding up with the frequency, which is an integer multiple of omega naught, what happens is the, the, the fundamental period reduces by an integer factor. So that even though the fundamental period for this is T1 by three, T1 is still a period for this because any integer multiple of the fundamental period is also a period. And overall, and two could be fundamental period, undefined author by the way, like in period for this is also T1. And therefore the overall fundamental period for this is also the fundamental period for this is also T1, which is 2 pi by omega naught. And here is Excuse me, sir. How did you say that Troka fundamental period T1 is like isn't that a constant function? Many yani ka fundamental period is undefined. I said the two ka fundamental period is undefined, but T1 is a period of two. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. Right. So it T1 is still a period, right? And and anything is a period of a DC signal or, or a constant signal. Okay. Yes. Now yes, sir. Right. Let me generalize this even further. Right. So if I were to give you this 
something which looks like this x of t as being equal to summation k going from minus infinity to plus infinity and there's a there's some constant here right times e raised to power j k omega naught t so let me stop here there's a, there's a question uh, ji sir सही है अगर टू की जगह कोई और लाइक ई की पार समथिंग लाइक एक्सपोनेंट होता तो फिर वो पूरा फंक्शन होना था पीरियोडिक या नहीं मे नॉट हैव बीन मे नॉट हैव बीन ठीक है सर डिपेंड्स ऑन टू की जगह क्या था सो फॉर एग्जांपल टू की जगह ई रेज टू पावर माइनस टी टाइम्स यू ऑफ टी है साथ व्हाट डू यू थिंक देन वुड दैट सम हैव बीन पीरियोडिक नो सर नो बिकॉज़ e is part t times u of t is not periodic yes right and you're adding an aperiodic signal to everything else which is periodic and the sum therefore is aperiodic as well okay sir okay excuse me sir uh yes jimaz sir ye second wali example ka fundamental period hai ke nahi hai second wali example ka fundamental period hai ke nahi hai what do you mean by that मतलब एग्जिस्ट फंडामेंटल पीरियड है तो वो क्या है और अगर नहीं है तो ये समझ नहीं आएगी फंडामेंटल पीरियड फॉर द सेकंड एग्जांपल टू पाई बाय ओमेगा नॉट टू पाई बाय ओमेगा नॉट सर तो आपने जो वो पाई बाय थ्री था आपने कहा कि वो टी वन बाय थ्री है मतलब सिंपल इंटीजर डिवाइड करती है या? तो इस टी वन को फंडामेंटल पीरियड रखे तो जो फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल भी थी या? उसमें अगर पाई बाय ओमेगा नोट का अगर टू से मल्टीप्लाई करते हैं सिंपल इंटीजर से तो भी तो वो हो जाए तो वहां पे फंडामेंटल पीरियड क्यों वो किया सो फंडामेंटल पीरियड सो मास व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फंडामेंटल फंडामेंटल पीरियड इज द स्मॉलेस्ट पीरियड फॉर व्हिच दैट एक्स ऑफ टी इक्वल्स एक्स ऑफ टी प्लस कैपिटल टी इज सैटिस्फाइड राइट अच्छा ठीक है फर्स्ट एग्जांपल में उल्टा था ठीक है हां एंड वी एंड वी डिड दिस व्हेन वी टॉक्ड अबाउट कॉम्प्लेक्स एक्सपोनेंशियल राइट ठीक है सर ओके नाउ सो लेट मी लेट मी कम टू दिस इक्वेशन नंबर 4 हियर now this equation number 4 is actually a generalization of everything that you've seen up above i mean all of the three things that you've seen up above right this is equation number 4 is actually a generalization of the first three right the most generalized that you can think of right is may you not only you have a term which corresponds to a frequency of omega not you also have a term corresponding to a frequency of 2 omega not 3 omega not 4 omega not and so on and so forth multiplied by some constant and that constant may be zero or may not be zero depending on what a is r okay so what do you think the fundamental period for this is going to be or or the period for this is going to be for this i mean it, first off is x of t periodic right so is is, is here's a question right is x of t periodic what do you think okay right so let me pick on abdullah nisar he says ke it's abdullah so uh, yes sir it will be product that was the typo okay <laughs> so sir typo right so uh, why do you think abdullah it would be periodic and many others are saying as well it's periodic why do you think it is going to be periodic so just like from example 3 we've seen that it was periodic so ye yeah. bhi periodic hoga right so i mean the reason why it's actually pre periodic uh, okay so uh, let me see ke somebody uh, hafsa yes sir rita so um, why do you think it's periodic sir i think it's periodic because um iska jo fundamental period hoga to be 2 pi by k omega not and um it's um periodic okay yeah so so every term here right asam mein terms ho kya rahi hai so how are you multiply are you adding up so this summation represents addition right so this this summation here is addition right so there are multiple exponentials being added up and the smallest frequency that there is in this sum of exponentials corresponds to when k equals 0 by the way uh there was a uh, comment in the chat box said let me clarify this when i say k k summation going from k equals minus infinity to plus infinity what does this mean this means that you're summing over all integer values of k going from minus infinity to plus infinity right is is that clear right so when you when i say summation that means you're you're considering every integer value of k 
and you're just adding them up. It's like a for loop. ठीक है? For k going from minus infinity to plus infinity over the integer set, sum everything up. Okay, so that's what the summation represents, right? Now in here, I mean, there's going to be a term corresponding to k equals zero, right? And there's going to be a term corresponding to k equals one. The term corresponding to k equals one corresponds to a frequency of omega naught. Right? Or its period? What is it? 2 pi by omega naught. And then there's a term corresponding to k equals 2. The frequency for that term is 2 omega naught. And the period is just half of what it was earlier, of the of the first term. Okay? This term, ka, the period is just three times smaller than the first one. The fourth term ka, is just four times smaller than the first one. And for each one of those terms, you're just increasing the frequency by an integer multiple. And therefore, the time period is decreasing by an integer factor, and therefore, the LCM, if you will, and, and, and that's something that people have sort of memorized, the LCM, if you will, would be the period of the first term. Right? Is 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 that clear? All right. Excellent. Now, my video appears to have paused. Hold on. Okay, so to summarize, the period for the fundamental period for this signal, uh, so for, uh, is the, the answer to this question, of course, is yes, it is periodic, and moreover, uh, the fundamental period is uh, t. Equals two pi by omega naught, right? Uh, Jee Zain, go ahead. Sir, actually, this might sound a bit dumb, but sir, can can we assume this to be an integral from minus infinity to to infinity with regards to k, and then argue that just the integral will be that's also periodic. So this thing should not also be periodic. It also be periodic. No. So in that, so Zain, I mean, see, this has to be an integer multiple. Right. K. Yes. Yes. It has to be an integer, and that's why it holds. Okay. So, mm -hmm. for example, I think there were some comments here as well. So, if if for example, omega naught is, and there's one point one omega naught. Yes, sir. Right, and then there's uh, there's pi omega naught. Yes, sir. Right, and you won't be able to find integer multiple there. So, sir, this this summation sign assumes that the k k values will be that will be integer integer yes. values. Yes. Okay. And that's when I as I said, Kiri, when I whenever I write the summation, so from here on, whenever I write the summation, that means that the values of k actually take a jump over an integer set, from minus infinity all the way up to plus infinity. Okay, sir. I got you. Okay. So, for example, if this was summation from k equals minus two. To plus two, this the values would have been minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, and that's it. Okay. okay. So that's our mathematical okay. notation that we're going to keep on using. Thank you. Right. Okay. So the point, uh, once again, to summarize, is that this signal that I just showed you, which is actually a series now, is a periodic signal which has a, a fundamental period of t equals two pi by omega naught, and this representation. Is called the Fourier series representation, right? This representation is called the Fourier series representation, right? And we say, yeah, so we say, okay, equation four is the Fourier series representation, and we say, okay, uh, the term. Corresponding to k equals plus minus one is the fundamental harmonic, fundamental or first harmonic, right? And that's that's once again uh, a definition that we use when you say harmonics, right? What that means is within this series representation. The term which corresponds to k equals one, which is a one times e raised by j omega naught t, 
and a minus one times e is minus a omega naught t. Those two terms are going to be called the first harmonics within the series, right? Similarly, uh, the corresponding to k equals plus minus two, we would say that this is the second harmonic, and so on and so forth. And the term corresponding to, in general, k equals plus minus n would be the nth harmonic, right? And so, therefore, we say in the, within this Fourier series representation is just a sum of harmonics. Okay, um, Zen, did you have a question or was from this before? All right. Thank you. All right. Now, here's the point. Now, Fourier claimed. Fourier claimed that any periodic signal that I give you, right? That periodic signal can actually be broken down and can be represented in the form of equation number four. And that's if, if it's really true, that's really, really a powerful result. What you're saying is no matter what the periodic signal is, no matter what the periodic signal is, I can write it in this form, right? Just like Taylor series, like any differentiable function, a differentiable signal can be represented in terms of that, that Taylor series representation. Just like that, Fourier claimed that any periodic signal that you can find that can be an alternate representation for that is this summation or is this series representation, which is now called the Fourier series representation. Okay. Now this may seem like a, uh, I mean, how is that even possible? But let's try to build upon those. And by the way, uh, you know when this was derived. You know the time frame when this was derived. Anybody has any idea? Of Fourier. So I think Fourier was born, uh, I mean, he did this in early 1800s, right? So this was about centuries, two centuries ago, whatever we're doing now. Okay. Anyway, so we're trying to build on this. We're trying to see Fourier Fourier. Let's try to uh, consider just one. So, so Fourier claimed. So, that any periodic signal can be written in the form of four, form of equation number four. Right, and and we say really, let's let's uh, try to take some examples and and see whether that is true or not. Uh, G Hamza. G sir, before you continue, sir, I have a harmonics concept. What about it? So harmonics is just a term that we utilize, the, the term we define, and we say that is me. You see, so is equation number four. Ke andar, there are many many terms that actually add up, and after they add up. They they form the original uh, the, the signal that you're given right x of t right or uske under hai right so the first harmonic would be so a one times e raised to the power j omega naught t ye term hai theke? this I would say is the first harmonic right and a minus one e raised to the power minus j omega naught t this also corresponds this corresponds to k equals minus one these are the first harmonics right what about the second harmonics Second harmonics are a two e raised to the power j two omega naught t and a minus two e raised to the power minus j two omega naught t. This contribution there in the Fourier series representation, these are called the second harmonics. And the reason why they call the second harmonics because these harmonics have a frequency which is twice compared to the first one or the fundamental harmonic. Okay, so up you're just adding complex exponentials up, which, ha which has a, have a frequencies increasing by an integer factor. Okay. Nth harmonic, kya hai? Nth harmonic is a n e raised to the power j n omega naught t, ye wali term, and a minus n e raised to the power minus j n omega naught t, ye wali term. These two are called the nth harmonics within the series. Okay. Uh, is that? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going back to yeah, let's see can really 
periodic signals be represented? Let's just start with fund very, very basic periodic signals and see okay, whether we can try to write them uh, in, in the form that Fourier claimed they could be written, right? So just as a, as, as, as a recall, X of T Fourier claimed is, can be represented K going from minus infinity to plus infinity, a K e raised to part J K omega naught T. All right, so let's consider an example X of T, which is equal to sine omega naught T. I mean, simple enough, right? So sine omega naught T remember is a periodic signal, okay? Which has a frequency of two pi by omega naught. Oh, sorry, fundamental period of two pi by omega naught. Can I write this as a sum of complex exponentials or can I write this in terms of equation number four? Okay, any, anybody? Can we write this in the form of four? Any ideas whether that's possible or not possible? So we've, we've done this somewhere. Good. So Hassan says uh, Euler's formula. So what what formula? G yeah, Hassan. Sir, we can write uh, you any complex exponential equal to the, the cosines and sines. Yeah. So we can probably take two two exponentials and then subtract them from each other to remove the cosine part. Okay. Good. And and we will just be left with the sine part. Excellent, excellent, right? So, so I, I, Euler's identity is is the following, right? So, is Euler's identity is e to the j omega naught t is cosine omega naught t uh, plus j sine omega naught t, and therefore e to the minus j omega naught t is cosine omega naught t minus j sine omega naught t because cosine is even and sine is odd, right? Is, is an odd signal, right? Um, and if I were to extract cosine omega naught t as Hassan suggested from these two equations, I would just add them up, right? So if this is equation number one and this is equation number two, uh, adding one and two and dividing by two, I get Two cosine, which only divide by two, nikar the two cosine omega naught t equals e raised to j omega naught t plus e raised to a minus j omega naught t, and therefore, I mean this is, I mean some people say yeah this is also the Euler's identity. In fact, cosine omega naught t is actually e raised to a j omega naught t plus e raised to a minus j omega naught t divided by two. Right, so this is. Uh, this is a consequence of the Euler's identity, if you will. And some people say, yeah, this is the Euler's identity as well. Right? This could be considered the Euler's identity as well, or it's so fundamental, right? Um, and similarly, can I say something about the sine omega naught t? So minus karke niche, usse divide kar denge j se. Excellent, right? So this would be e raised by j omega naught t minus e raised by minus j omega naught t divided by 2j. Right, so this is uh, this is a, a representation of sine omega naught t in terms of complex exponentials. Right, so a cosine is just a sum of uh, a complex exponential frequency omega naught and a frequency of minus omega naught. Okay, this is say real parts add up, jate, imaginary parts cancel. Jate. Sine omega naught t is the difference, right? And then you divide that by two j. Okay, now from here, so this is similarly. From here, is, is this, does this look like four? Right, does this or does this not? Right, so here, here's, a, here's four. Okay, somebody, uh, somebody other than Hassan, I mean, if I were to, Say this is four, and what are the the k's here? What are the a k's here? What is the omega not here? Uh, right. Okay, Daniel. Excellent, Daniel. Can you unmute yourself? 
one. Uh, D, Daniel, so one half. So I take this as one minus one upon two J times e raised to power minus J omega naught T plus one upon two J e raised to power plus J omega naught T, right? So what are AKs here? And I take care, this is like, in fact, nothing but uh, equation number four. Right, so this is actually equal to summation of k going from minus infinity to plus infinity, a k times e raised by j k omega naught t with a k being equal to the following, minus one upon two j when k equals minus one, one upon two j when k equals plus one and zero otherwise. All other values of AK are zero. There are only two terms inside the series. Sir, ye summation pe minus one or plus one nahi lagayenge. Haan, so I, I, okay, good. I can say that these just goes from minus one to plus one, but I can alternately say that it actually, in fact, goes from minus infinity to plus infinity if all of the coefficients are zero. Okay. okay. I, I just want to transform it into a form which looks like four, just to make sure yaar, wo us wali form may represent kiya ja sakta, kiya ja sakta, right? And I say, yaar, this form does indeed hold true if I take a plus one as being equal to one upon two j and a minus one as being equal to minus one upon two j and all the rest of a's should be zeros. And we see here yeah. four year perhaps and for this particular example was right. Excuse me, sir. Uh, G, G, sir. Sir, I didn't understand that like, there were two terms, e to power minus j omega naught t and e to power j omega naught t. Yeah. So how did we just uh, bought it to the like, sing single case e to power j k omega naught t like, right. last okay. time? Like... Once again, uh, uh, this is not a single term. When I, I say there's a summation here, there are infinitely ter many terms here. Yeah, sir, but bro, like, jab we, jab hum log k ki value, let, let's say minus one lete hai in, yeah. in this expression. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, I got it, I got it. So, got it? Correct, correct. Do, do harmonics honge, wo add ho jayenge. Yes, exactly. Aur baki sare harmonics ki coefficient zero hai. Ji, sir. Right? Uh, Musa? Uh, ji, sir. Sir, I just uh, wanted to confirm ke ye jo claim hai about Fourier transformations, is this only for bounded periodics? Yeah, is this for the all even like uh, 10 and stuff. Okay, so we'll talk about this later. Okay, okay. Right, so so I mean, I, I've not really said yet, kya Fourier say kya ra tha, nahi kya ra tha. I just say, okay. Right? I've, I've not said that yet. And and there was this okay. whole debate when Fourier suggested this. I mean, Langrange was okay. there, Eiler were there. Right? And we'll talk about that debate a little bit, but, but a little while later, okay? All right, so this is example number one. And we see for this simple example, I mean, things are looking good, right? And and we say that the Fourier perhaps was right, right? Um, let's talk about example number two. And this example number two, uh, let's uh, do a slightly more involved. And let me pick it up. Yeah. So this is x of t equals one plus sine omega naught t plus two cosine omega naught t plus cosine two omega naught t plus pi by four. Uh, first off, uh, is this a periodic signal? And, and of course it's a periodic signal because there's sines and cosines, right? Uh, a sine, and cosines are frequency omega naught. The other one is two omega naught, right? Uh, or the two omega naught wala jo term hai, us, uh, the, the period for that is just half of the period of the first two terms. And therefore uh, the LCM, if you will, is, is, is T equals two pi by omega naught. And therefore this is periodic. Now the, uh, the question of course is, can this be represented in terms as, as, as in form four, right? So uh, uh, the problem statement is represent this 
as Fourier series, which is actually equation number four. How do I do that? So who's gonna help me? So how do I go about this? Uh, G Hassan. Sir, so the Pelly Valley term, okay, the one, yeah. uh, that is going to be the K equals zero Valley term. You right. just make explanation chala jata hai. Right. What about the other terms? Then for the sine and cosine, I would just use the order's identity. Right. So I, and I, I would probably. Good. So this is 1 upon 2 J. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Hassan, you were saying something. I, I just said that you would have to bunch the uh, numbers together because yeah, my case. Okay, excellent, excellent. Right. So this is this is just I use the Euler's identity and just replace uh, as Daniel suggests as well. Just write Euler's equivalent, right? And this is plus two times and cosine omega naught is e raised to the power j omega naught t plus e raised to the power minus j omega naught t uh, divided by two. And then there's a uh, there's a cosine two omega naught t plus pi by four term. What happens there? This is e raised to par. Achha, yahan pe kya hoga? I would have probably broken this up because uh, I'm like cos two theta ki bhi, like a plus b ka plus formula hota na, yeah. we would have values for cos pi okay. by four and sine pi by four. All right. That's what I would have done. Right. So I, I would not have done that because that would like my life a little bit harder. So there's a e much easier way to do it, you know? So this, I just apply the Euler's identity once again, right? So my e raised by j theta, so theta is just this entire thing now, right? So I would just have e raised by j two omega naught t plus pi by four, right? And there's a plus e raised to power minus j two omega naught t plus pi by four divided by two. Right, and let's just work with this, right? So now if I just start clubbing things together as Hassan suggested, right? So this would be, uh, this two is gonna cancel with this two and I am going to get e raised to part j omega naught t and this would be uh, one plus one upon two j. And I would have e raised to the power minus j omega naught t, and I would get one minus one upon two j. So I'm clubbing things together only, right? And now I have this term here, the second term. What do I do with that? This is one upon two e raised to the power j pi by four times e raised to the power j to omega naught t, right? And yes. plus I would have one upon two e raised to power minus j pi by four times e raised to power minus j to omega naught t. Does that make sense? All I've done is just some, some simple uh, manipulations, right? Yes, sir. All right, is this of the form of equation number four? This is. Right, this is, right? So Ibrahim, do you think this is of the form of equation number four? And if, if yes, I mean, just let me zoom out. If it is, so equations may, coefficients kya hai? So who was I asking? Uh, Ibrahim. Not sure. Okay, anybody else? Uh, G. Abdullah. Sir, A0 will be one. All right, so this, this corresponds to A0, excellent. Oops, see what happened. Uh, and sir, A of minus two uh, will be one by two. Right, into so this, e is, minus five by four. this is A0. Uh, this is A1. A1. And what about this? A minus one. A minus one. What about this? A2, a2 and then a minus 2 and what about this a minus 2 a minus 2 double this all right all right so um i can therefore i don't know what's going on All right, there you go. 
Okay, so now what we can say therefore is k x of t is indeed of the form can be written of the form which looks like this a sub k e raised to power j k omega naught t where k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, with a k being equal to this whatever I'm going to say right here. So one when k equals zero, um, one upon one upon two j when k equals plus one, one minus one upon two j when k equals minus one, um, one upon two e raised to j pi by four when k equals plus two and half e raised to power minus j pi by four when k equals minus two, right? So far so good, right? So even uh, for this slightly more complicated looking periodic signal, we we see here uh, Fourier was, was sort of right, right? So you can represent that as a, as a Fourier series. All right, now comes the, a little bit of a hard part. So up till now, what we've been doing is, I mean, let's assume that Fourier was right. And if Fourier was right, what we've been dealing with are just periodic signals, which are just sines and cosines, right? Sines and cosines. And we said, Kitty, for these sines and cosines, we can just apply Euler's identity, just analyze and by observation. And we see Kitty coefficients and yes, Fourier was 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 okay, was 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 on the right track, right? But what if there was some periodic signal? which is, I mean, if you look at it, is not really a sum of sines and cosines at first glance, right? An example could, for example, be a square wave, right? Or for that matter, uh, so what if there was a, a complicated, uh, we had a more sophisticated uh, periodic signal. Something, for example, which was something like this, yeah, theta, okay? Or if this is zero, I mean, this is something of this sort. This is actually absolute of a sine wave. But this is more, more I mean, I, at first glance, I won't be able to write this as a, as a sum of sines and cosines. Right, so I need some sort of analysis uh, to be able to see KR um, if the x of t equals that summation a k that equation number four did hold true. How do you actually determine the Fourier series coefficients? Okay, so that's the next question we want to answer. Right? Um, yeah. So the next section is uh, determining the Fourier series coefficients. And when I say Fourier series coefficients, what I mean are these AKs, right? Uh, of, so this is what we want to try to figure out. Okay. So let's start here on a new page. Okay, any, any, any questions? Uh, Hassan has an important point. Are A and conjugates of A and N? Excellent, that's an excellent observation. And, and Zen says it makes sense. Yes, for this particular case, they indeed are conjugates of each other. And as we're gonna learn uh, a little while later, they must be conjugates if the X of T is a certain type of a signal. We're gonna learn about this a little bit more, but that's an excellent observation, excellent. Okay, so. So the question that we are trying to answer is, okay, first of all, assuming that uh, the Fourier series representation of X of T exists, right? Let's just assume that it exists, right? In other words, um, meaning 
x of t can be written in the form x of t equals summation k going from minus infinity to plus infinity a k e raised to power j k omega naught t right and and of course uh, x of t is periodic x of t equals x of t plus capital t where t equals 2 pi by omega naught so let's assume for a moment here uh, this fourier series representation does exist right um, and fourier was actually right if it does exist the question here is um, is there a, a way to obtain these Fourier series coefficients, AKs? I mean, without the observation that we've been doing. Yeah, uh, using some analysis. And of course, the answer is yes, right? And that's what we're going to try to do next, OK? So once again, our objective of whatever we're going to do next is will be, OK, given x of t, let's say there's a periodic signal that perhaps looks like this waveform uh, that you see, right? It looks like this waveform that you see uh, up here, right? This half wave rectifier of a sign, right? So it's, it's uh, I mean, negative values, positive value. And and now, given this waveform, from this waveform, somebody tells you, a genie tells you that Fourier was right, and the Fourier series representation, which is equation number four, holds true. If it does hold true, your objective is to take this waveform as an input, apply some mathematical analysis to it, so that that mathematical analysis gives you what the values of each one of those AKs are going to be, from minus infinity to plus infinity, K going from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, that's what we're going to try going to try to do, right? And uh, yes, the answer to that, Hassan, is orthogonality. Uh, I may not talk about that too much here. Uh, orthogonality, perhaps uh, some other time. Okay, so I'm just gonna just go through that analysis now, right? So, how do we do it? Um, here's how. So if I multiply x of t, so right, let me use blue. Oops. So this is the answer to this question. So let us multiply the signal x of t with e raised to power minus j and omega naught t and integrate over one period. Right, so in other words, what I'm saying is, okay, I take x of t and there's a signal x of t, right? I multiply that with e raised to power minus j and omega naught t and let me integrate this product with respect to the variable t from zero to capital T seconds, where capital T is, of course, your time period of the signal. And I know that's periodics and periodic with the period of capital T. Okay. Now, what does this evaluate tool? And let's try to do that. So this turns out to be equal to, so, so if this is equation number four, right? And this is equation number three. So this turns out to be equal to zero to capital T summation K going from minus infinity to plus infinity. And this is a K e raised to part J K omega naught T. And this is e raised to part minus J and omega naught T DT. Make sure you went three many together, right? So let's say we don't number this here. Right, and how do I get this? By the way, right. So who's who's uh, gonna help me here? Essen, how do I get this?
Ahsan, are you there? Right, not sure. Musa, what do you think? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, I mean, how do I get this term here? So uh, you just expanded x of t. Yeah, so I just replaced x of t, right? Just re replaced uh, x of t in Chinese five with four, right? I just looked up the definition of what of x of t was a series representation, assuming that it holds true, right? I just replaced that in equation number five, and this is what I get as the integral. Okay. Uh, somebody else uh, raise their hand, Masna. Uh, did you have a question or did you have an answer? No, sir. I had an answer. Okay, good. All right. So, what do I do? Tell me, Masna, how, how do I evaluate this integral? Sir, uh, I think we will find the integral remove the summation by evaluating this summation then multiply it with e power minus j okay. and omega naught so when i you say remove the summation let me remove the summation in the sense that let me bring it out of the integral because everything is linear yes sir so i can bring it out of the integral and the integral stays from 0 to capital t right um, and ak can come out of the integral as well because it's not a function of time yes sir right uh, G Zen, you have a question? Sir, yes. so with this, we are actually reinforcing the fact that every periodic signal is supposed to be linear, right? No, no. So, so every periodic signal is not supposed. To, what do you mean by a signal being linear? I mean, like, so, so this, this, the expression actually represents that we have assumed that it will be periodic. Hoga, like, yeah. to, for, the Fourier series applies for periodic signals. Yeah. So, after that, we are taking this summation out. We are assuming that the linearity we mentioned is there. Okay. So, linearity, linearity is a property not of signals, but linearity is a property yes, of yes, systems yes, or yes. operators. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and the reason why we can bring it out is because the integral operator is linear. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. Yes. Or, or, yes. I can think of the system and I can bring it out. Right? In other words, integral of A plus B is actually equal to integral of A plus integral of B. Yes, sir, because of the property of the integral, right? Yes, that's the property of the integral. Right. Good. Yeah. Okay. And AK can, a, a can also come out, right? Why? Because A's are not a function of time. And so what I'm really doing is everything that's not a function of time, let me bring it out of the integral. And everything that's a function of time, because that's what I'm integrating over, let me keep that inside the integral and then evaluate the integral from there. Okay. Uh, yeah, sir. So, our summation is we have limits of minus infinity to infinity. Yeah. And the integral is zero to t. Yes. So, minus infinity to zero is, we assume that the integral is zero. And if it is zero, then we change the summation accordingly. The limits. No, no, no. So, the, the integrating, integration is being done in the limits. No, no, no. 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 No, no, and summation is being yeah. acted upon as in on, on the variable k, which is a completely yeah. different variable. It's an independent yeah. variable. Okay. 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 Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Right. Good. All right. So uh, once again, everything is not a function of time brought out of the integral, everything which is a function of time inside the integral, right? So what is inside the integral? Uh, what is inside the integral is e raised by j. Uh, and I'm skipping one step here and just writing this as this. Right? So e, this is e raised by j k omega naught t times e raised by minus j n omega naught t. Uh, and then I think I take everything in the exponential. Exponential can that they add up. Uh, and then I take omega naught t and j as common. And what I'm left with is what you see on your screen, right? j times k minus n. Okay. Now, this is an integral that I need to evaluate now, right? So this is an integral I need to evaluate, right? So how do I evaluate this? Or what does this turn out to be equal to? So this is integral from 0 to t, e raised to part j, k minus n, 
omega naught t times dt. And remember that remember that k is an integer and n is an integer as well. Okay. So if k is an integer and n is an integer, what would k minus n be? Will that also not be an integer? Right? That would also be an integer. An integer minus an integer is always an integer. Okay. So k minus n will always be an integer as well. Okay. Now let's evaluate this. Yeah, integral. What is this equal to? This integral is equal to one upon j k minus n omega naught times e raised to the power j k minus n omega naught t and where this is evaluated from zero to capital T. Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, can can you bring me into your conversation then? Generalize. Yeah, sir. So Daniel actually mentioned that we need to change the submission limits. So I just asked him well, why does he need to do that? Okay, so we don't need to uh, do it yet. Okay, so let, let's 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 just try to see what you on on. Ye kya banega? What does this evaluate to? Uh, so Daniel se hi puch lete hain, right? Daniel, this is one upon j divided by k minus. Uh, so here. And this is e raised to part j, k minus n, omega naught times capital T, minus e raised to part j, k minus n, omega naught times zero, and therefore this is actually zero, which is actually equal to one. Right? Um, G sir. And what is capital T? Capital T is two pi by omega naught, right? So this is one upon j, k minus n, omega naught, and this is e raised to part j, k minus n, omega naught, and t is two pi by omega naught. This is minus one, and this omega naught cancels, and therefore what you get is one upon j, k minus n, omega naught, and this is e raised to part j. K minus n times two pi minus one. What is this equal to? Can somebody identify? Okay, what what this difference turns out to be equal to? What is this first term equal to here? So k is an integer, and n is an integer, and therefore k minus n is what? So minus one. You put as term. Uh, why minus one, Daniel? Sir, k minus one is multiple. Uh, a integer, right? Two pi j ka multiple hai na. Two pi j ka multiple hai, right? So what is e raised to pi j two pi an integer multiple? What is e raised to pi j two pi? क्या होता है वैसे चलें अगर when if k minus n was equal to one. Um, sir, one होता है. One होता है. What what if k minus n was equal to two? So वो भी one होगा. वो भी one होता है. Right. What is k? If k minus n was equal to three, that was would still have been one, right? Because what you're really talking about is this is this always stays one because this is two pi, either two pi or four pi or six pi or minus two pi or minus four pi or minus six pi, right? And we know that e raised by j two pi times any integer is always equal to one, right? And therefore, this turns out to be zero. You can claim, right? Okay. This turns out to be equal to zero, right? But if it is equal to zero, I mean, there's something wrong here, by the way, right? What is that wrong here? And and sort of, I think Hassan answered this already in the chat box. Um, if if this integral was equal to zero, I mean, that would have meant KR. This integral that we're talking about, the equation number five, is equal to zero, and and we we're not getting anywhere, right? Can I say something? G buzz, please. So because function जो है वो periodic है मेरे ख्याल में. Yeah. तो वो जैसे मतलब जितना positive peak तक जाएगा उतना ही negative peak तक जाएगा. That okay. is why the integral is giving us zero. 
एक्सेलेंट एक्सेलेंट वाज सो द रीजन व्हाई सो दिस इज आई मीन वन ऑफ द वेज वी फाउंड आउट कि आर दिस इंटीग्रल टर्न्स आउट टू बी क्लोज जीरो इज थ्रू दिस कंप्यूटिंग द इंटीग्रल एग्जैक्टली राइट सो वी हैव नॉट टॉक्ड अप अबाउट एनी इंटूशन व्हाई दिस टर्न्स आउट टू बी जीरो बट आदर जस्ट इवैल्यूएट द आई मीन गो थ्रू द राउंड्स और जो है मैकेनिकली इसके इंटीग्रल को इवैल्यूएट कर लें और इंटीग्रल जीरो आ जाता है एंड देन यू नीड टू थिंक अबाउट व्हाई इज इट जीरो एंड यू सी कि यार व्हाट दिस रियली हियर इज is actually a cosine in the real time domain and a sine in the real domain right and you're integrating that sine and cosines over integer number of multiples or integer multiple of cycles integer number of cycles and we know okay if you integrate a sine or if you integrate a cosine over integer number of cycles you're always going to get zero right that's that's another interpretation or an intuitive interpretation of why this integral turns out to be zero right but i say kr as as people are uh, are, are saying in, in the chat box as well this in fact is equal to 0 only when k is not equal to n and that's what i claim and right? so this turns out to be equal to 0 so this equal to 0 when k is not equal to n right why why do i say this i mean why is the k equals n k special these and kya khayal hai maz maz se pehle sorry aapka question hai bhi ya pehle ka tha ye nahi nahi ye pehle ka tha all right all right so then why do you think what is so special about k equals what happens when k equals n when k equals n what happens here when so, k equals n So this again turns to one na. So you said so nothing special happens. Like, there will be zero. Yeah, that. Okay, uh, Daniel. There infinity goes. That left side per denominator. Me. Okay. Oh I, yeah. Right. Uh, Musa, I, do you want to say something? I know that. So that was same. That was same. The same thing. All right. So when k equals n, you have in the numerator you have zero, and in the denominator you have zero as well. right so therefore this may not be zero i mean so that now we need to take extra care and see ki ji asal mein kya ho raha hai right and one of the ways you could do it is just apply lopatel rule and as as people already say in the chat box you just apply the lopatel rule and figure out ki ji what does this evaluate to i would rather not do that i mean there's a simple way of doing it right which is ki when k equals zero i just look i go back to this integral here right so when k or when k equals n uh, then what does this integral evaluate to 0 to t e raised to power j k minus n omega not t dt what is this equal to this is just 0 to t and you are integrating one over the period from 0 to t and this turns out to be t right so when k equals n this integral is t but when k is not equal to n this integral is equal to 0 right so this is a conclusion right so therefore therefore so integral 0 to t e raised to power j k minus n omega not t dt this is equal to 0 or actually this is equal to t when k equals n and is zero when k is not equal to n okay ji uh, daniel ji um samajh nahi aaya ki aapne is special case ke liye aapne ye left wale term ko ignore nahi kiya hai kaun si wali term ko jo so, denominator mein k minus n tha maine uh, ignore nahi kiya right so I have actually when k equals n, I actually went back to the original definition of what this integral was. Okay, Daniel, unmute, Karle, please. Okay, okay, okay. So, right, I just so, went back and see, Kiji. Instead of me applying the L'Hopital rule, which you can actually do, I mean, that's just think makes things a little bit more tedious, but you can do it. You apply the L'Hopital rule if you wish to, but I would rather just go back to the original definition of what this integral was and just plug in k equals n, and see what this integral evaluates to. and i see given k equals n i mean this is just a constant this is just equal to 1 and i'm integrating 1 from 0 to t and the area under the curve is always t right so that's much easier for me to do that's why i went back is that clear ji sir 
ठीक है जी सर तो माय कंक्लूजन इज द फॉलोइंग दिस इज द कंक्लूजन दैट दिस इंटीग्रल दैट वी वर ट्राइंग टू इवैल्यूएट इज इक्वल टू t फॉर k इक्वल टू n एंड इज इक्वल टू 0 व्हेन k इज नॉट इक्वल टू n राइट नाउ सिंस आई एम लिमिटेड ऑन स्पेस सो लेट मी जस्ट लुक बैक एंड और परहैप्स राइट द इक्वेशन वंस अगेन सो दिस वाज this was uh this thing here right so this was equation number 6 right so so from 6 let's let me write this back which was k if i multiply x of t with e raised to the power minus j n omega not t that turns out to be equal to this summation where k is going from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, this is a k and this is integral from 0 to t uh, and this was uh, e raised to power j k minus n omega not t dt so this is what the original equation was and i have now evaluated ki yaar ye jo term hai na ye jo integral wali term hai this integral term is equal to t when k equals n and for all other values of k is equal to 0 for all other values of k so ye kya ban jayega what would this be equal to Right, so you have a summation of from k going from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? And for each one of those k's, you're multiplying this with this green uh, brackets. Major cheese, you're seeing, which is integral. And this integral is equal to t, or is non-zero only for one value of k, and that value of k is equal to n. And the non-zero value is capital T. For all other values of k inside the summation. For all other values of k inside the summation, this integral turns out to be zero, right? So within the summation, how many things will be left? There is only going to be one term left, and that term is just going to be a sub n, as Hassan says in the chat box, times t. Is that stuff clear? G z n is that is that clear? Okay, good. Anybody else who has a question, who has a confusion? सर इसमें हम लोग जो समिशन है तो के की सारी वैल्यूज नहीं होंगी लाइक उसको प्लस उनका सम नहीं लेंगे लाइक जब जब हमारे पास टी आ गया या देखें के की सारी वैल्यूज के ऊपर ले रहे हैं योर योर एक्चुअली समिंग ओवर ऑल वैल्यूज ऑफ के इज जस्ट दैट द थिंग दैट यू मल्टीप्लाइंग विद ए के इज नॉन जीरो ओनली फॉर वन वैल्यू ऑफ के फॉर ऑल अदर वैल्यूज ऑफ के दे दे कैंसिल्ड आउट दे जस्ट ऑल जीरोस So you're actually all of amongst all of these infinitely many values which are being summed up. You're singling out one and picking out yes, one, sir. which is the nth term, and all the others you're just forcing them to be zero through this integral operation. Yes, sir. Okay, and therefore this sum turns out to be a n times t, and or, or this integral here, and therefore I can say that a sub n, which is what will become? This is one upon t. Integral from zero to t, x of t, e raised to the power minus j, n omega not t. Right. So this isn't this a really um, fantastic result that we've actually derived, right? Right. So what we've really done is through all of this analysis, uh, which may seem tedious to you, which may seem complicated to you, but the outcome has been really brilliant in the sense. That, that there it was. I mean, this the signal is actually a sum of so complex-looking, complex exponentials. I mean, literally speaking, right? I multiplied with these coefficients, which are a k's, and there are infinitely many one, many of them. And I need a way of finding them out. And this is the way of finding them out. A n. All you need to do in order to determine a n for any n, you just multiply the signal x of t with This e is by minus e n omega naught t and just integrate over one period. Okay, so I see a oof in the in the chat box. I mean, Zen, can you can you try to explain what that was for? 
I'm, I'm assuming, I'm hoping that just blew your mind. Right? So, so many emotions, right? So it, it blows my mind, right? So, and, and mind you, this was done more than 200 years ago. Okay. Uh, Ji, Hamza, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Sir, I have to ask you that if you are given a sum of many periodic cycles, as, as we were given in example two and example three, yeah. sir, so, uh, will we treat an like individual components? Uh, we will uh, use this formula individual component signals and no, then not find out. Not necessarily, right. but the output. All right. When you do a composite signal, okay, rather a composite signal, now you just apply this 4D series decomposition on that composite signal. Okay. 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 So if, I get it. If I can try to conclude here, right? So in conclusion, if and I, I keep on saying if the Fourier series representation exists, and, and I'm, I'm going to have some more things to say about this perhaps in the next lecture, we don't have time for that. If the Fourier series representation of a periodic signal x of t with period t equals 2 by, by omega naught exists, if it exists, then the Fourier series representation says the following, that X of T can be represented as a summation of periodic complex exponentials, which are harmonics, okay? As a summation K going from minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, where these coefficients A, Ks can be found out by this expression that we've derived, right? Where this is zero to t, uh, x of t e raised to power minus j k omega naught t. We say that this is the synthesis expression. And the reason why it's synthesis is because, I mean, knowing these coefficients, it allows you to synthesize a periodic signal by just adding up uh, harmonics, right? And this is called the analysis equation or analysis expression. Why? Because it allows you to analyze what the Fourier series coefficients or the coefficients are going to be. And AKs, AKs, they are called, so I'm, I'm going to come uh, answer your question. Just give me a minute, right? These are called the Fourier series or the spectral coefficients. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take questions. Hamza, you raise your hand. Yes, sir, sir, my question was that for this, we need to know the time period for any, for all systems, or is two pi or omega q for apply? We just need to know the time period of the composite signal. And corresponding to that, Time period of the composite signal, you, eval you evaluate this. Okay? Uh, Jimaz. Sir, ye hamare paas a ke, a ke zyada ke sayenge, ye baat se ki, because okay. Jab ke, okay. To n hoga, tabhi humne wo dekha na, a right, right, right. right. So, uh, I mean, just let me clarify here. Uh, this this equation holds for all k, no matter what k is. From minus infinity to plus infinity. So, for example, if you want to determine what what a plus one is, we just plug in k equals one and determine what the coefficient is. If you want to determine what a two is, just plug in k equals two and determine what the coefficient is. Okay, right. So, any value of k you plug in, this equation is going to hold. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, Maz, is is that clear? Yeah, I see. Okay, carry. Yeah. Okay, sir. Understand. Understand. All right. So Hassan, uh, you have a question about a n being the conjugate of a minus n. Uh, so what a n? So let me just uh, point you uh, towards the right direction. A n and or a k on a minus k are conjugates of each other only if x of t is real, and that's something you can prove. Okay, and we're going to do. I mean, the conjugate symmetry. I'm carrying about me. Right, we're going to prove this later. Okay. 
Yes, sir, that makes sense because I was thinking that here we have one place A minus K. So, the integral when we are exponential, it will be positive. It will be conjugate, basically. But X of T should not be changing the complexity. Yes, that's a proof. Any other questions? Right, so once again, uh, if the 40 series representation exists, right, then the analysis that we've done allows us to, a way to compute what these Fourier series coefficients are and what these spectral coefficients are. And why do are they, why are they called spectral co coefficients? I, I would perhaps talk about them uh, as, as we move along this chapter as well, right? So, but they're called spectral coefficients because they, spectral frequencies are there, right? And, and they're associated with frequencies omega naught, two omega naught, three omega naught, and that's why they're called spectral coefficients, right? Ji uh, Ibrahim. Yes, sir, I was saying that we have done it for periodic signals for which the fundamental period is 2 pi over omega naught, right? Yeah. And if it's multiple, it can be applied or not. It can be, it can be. And I would then say that omega naught is something else. Okay, sir. And, and if you know the frequency, right, which is omega naught, right, or if you, for that matter, if you knew what the time period was, let's say time period was four seconds, right, you would just yes, compute sir. what omega naught is, and omega naught is two pi by t, and you just plug in that yes, omega naught in into these expressions, and this would allow you for that analysis. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to stop 